Subject of today's video took over the SEC as a tight end, was once a projected first round pick, and will go down as one of the better players at his position in school history. Unfortunately, his name was not called in the 2022 NFL Draft, and it's because of various reasons. He has a very interesting story, had a productive career, and there really shouldn't have been a reason why his stock fell so bad, but that is what would happen. In today's video, we're going to talk about who this guy is, go through his career, and why he went from a first rounder to an undrafted player who may really not get much of a chance in the NFL. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So you're probably wondering who the subject of today's video is, and it is none other than former Texas A&M tight end Jalen Weidermeyer. I've already done a video about him on the channel, but I thought I'd take a look at why his stock crashed. So to really understand this story, we need to go back in time and meet his dad, Vincent Weidermeyer. In an interview, he was asked to relive his glory days. His mind would wander for a little bit, then he recalled it was last year. At the time of this article, that was after Jalen's freshman year of football, and honestly, it all makes sense. 40 years ago, his dad was a star running back at Dickinson High School, and he made more than a few highlight real worthy plays. While he was really good, he pretty much kept it on the down low. He had eight kids, and they probably would have bragged about their dad's athletic traits, but they didn't really know about him. His dad said, quote, I don't think any of my kids really knew. They'd only heard some things through people in the neighborhood who knew me. In the town, a local friend by the name of Michael Clerk had this to say. Quote, Vincent was amazing. I remember things he did on the field that were incredible. If you could get a look at some old films, you'd be amazed. His footwork and the moves that he did as a running back were incredible. But a couple decades later, his son Jalen would top all of his achievements, and it meant a lot more to Vincent than anything he did himself. And it wasn't like his dad wasn't a big deal, as he actually earned a scholarship to play at Texas Tech at the cornerback spot. That didn't end up working out though, so he joined the military, more specifically the Army. After leaving the service, his dad returned to Dickinson and started a career as a specialist at a chemical plant. Then he would settle down and start a family, and he had four girls and four boys, and all of his sons were athletically gifted and played college football at some level. The biggest difference was that his first three sons were similar to his dad at six foot one, but Jalen was different. He was that height in eighth grade. There was one moment in particular that made Vincent believe his son was going to be special. He said, quote, he made a run one day, faked out a lot of people, and stiff-armed a guy. I knew he could play college football, I just didn't know he kept getting bigger. He was six foot one at that time. So yeah, from there Jalen began to play both football and basketball, but one sport really took his heart. He said, quote, I knew for sure once I started getting offers from all around the country that I was going to pick football. But I'm a pretty good basketball player too, I would say. He blew up at Dickinson High School and was now seen as one of those rare hybrid players and schools from all over the country wanted him. His final five included Clemson, Miami, Georgia, Texas A&M, and Ole Miss, and those are big time programs. Over the course of his high school career, Weidermeyer had over 1,200 yards receiving and 12 touchdowns while doing well at camps and impressing coaches with both his character and his potential. So where was he gonna go? Eventually, Texas A&M began to stick out, especially after he visited for the 2018 Clemson game. He said, quote, I went to the Clemson game and that was a great game. My parents loved it and I've never been anywhere that big with that many people. It was amazing. A&M was doing really good and they even stayed with Clemson in that game, but if they can pull it off against Alabama next week, that would be awesome. Anyone who visits the 12th man at College Station knows what an incredible place it is to play, but would he end up going there? Yeah. He chose the Aggies and had this to say, quote, it ultimately came down to Coach Fisher and his offense. There's such an atmosphere around Texas A&M that I love, it's close to home, and my family can go to every game. Jimbo Fisher eventually had this to say about signing Jalen, quote, I saw a big, long athlete who was very fluid with great acceleration, ball skills, balance, and body control. Plus, he was a really good basketball player, so he had skills in that area. Everything sounded great for Jalen, but he would have competition at the same position. They signed a top 50 guy who was a five star on some sources by the name of Baylor Cup. How would this affect Jalen's career? Well, it wouldn't have any impact as it turns out, but we have some more to talk about before then. Scouts were pretty high on him, as according to 24-7 Sports, he was a four star recruit, the number 15 tight end, and the 359th best player in the class of 2019. So how would he do at Texas A&M? Well, going into the 2019 season, the Aggies would have to replace tight end Jay Sternberger, and Baylor Cup was supposed to be the guy to do that, while Jalen would sit on the bench. Then, Cup got hurt in August. Jimbo Fisher said, quote, Baylor will be out for a while. He had surgery today, he had a plate put on his ankle, and the tibia on the lower part of his leg got rolled up upon. So he was out for the year, and now Jalen would step up and prove to everyone he was ready for the SEC. As a freshman, he catched 32 passes for 447 yards and six touchdowns. 
Wide receiver Jamon Osbin had this to say about it. Quote, I've never seen a guy come in and adapt so quickly to the speed of the game. And he's able to run those routes as a big guy. He's 255 pounds, but runs routes like a receiver. He knows how to attack a guy's leverages and all that stuff that you don't pick up on until you're later into the game. Obviously, he had a great freshman year as he was named a freshman All-American by The Athletic, 24-7 Sports, Pro Football Focus, and even the SEC Coaches Poll. Weidermeyer had an extremely bright future, but how would he do as a sophomore? Well, he'd pick up right where he left off, as this time, he increased his catches to 46, had 506 yards receiving, and 6 touchdowns. His best game of the year would come in a road win over Auburn, as he'd have 8 catches for 89 yards and 2 scores, and a 31-20 win against the Tigers. Because of his performance, Texas A&M ended up having a great year. The Aggies went 9-1 with an 8-1 mark in the conference, and finished the year ranked number 4 in the country. Sadly, because of their loss to Alabama, they'd be ranked 5th in the final college football playoff poll, and they would miss out on the bracket, and Notre Dame was put in instead. Some believe that the Aggies should have gotten in, but personally, they had their shot to beat Bama, and they couldn't do it. Weidermeyer once again had a great year, and going into 2021, he was seen as a preseason All-American, the number one tight end in the 2022 draft class, and someone who could help Texas A&M get to the playoff. How did he do in 2021? Well, he had 40 catches for 515 yards and 4 touchdowns. It was a little bit underwhelming if we're being honest. Yeah, Haynes King went down with an early injury, but Zach Calzada wasn't that bad, and I don't know if I blame the quarterback fully for this. His best game of the year came against South Carolina, as he had 4 catches for 75 yards and 2 touchdowns, but outside of that, it really wasn't anything super spectacular. He would put his name into the Texas A&M record books, though. For his career, he caught 118 passes for 1,468 yards and 16 touchdowns. That was the most touchdowns for a tight end in school history. He was also ninth all-time in receiving touchdowns. Obviously, he was NFL ready, and he would have opted out of the bowl game, but they didn't even have one. He said to the fans, quote, Aggie Nation, 12th man in the entire College Station community, from my first visit at campus, it felt like home. Thank you for making me one of your own. One scout was super high on him. He said, quote, Weidermeyer is possibly the most well put together of the top tight ends in the 2022 NFL draft. Standing at 6 foot 5 and 265 pounds, he is an absolute physical specimen. Last year, he demonstrated he could put that frame to use as a blocker, which had not been apparent as a freshman. What had been clear early on was his ability as a pass catcher. Weidermeyer has excellent hands displays excellent route running, and can put his weight to exceptional use as a threat in the back of the end zone. This was said before the 2021 season, but if you take a look at his stats from that year, I don't really understand what changed that much. Then his pro day happened. When he ran the 40-yard dash, he ran that in 5.03 seconds. I don't know if you know, but that is not good. Some offensive linemen run those kind of numbers, and Jordan Davis beat that by a mile. He also only had a 35 and a half inch vertical, which was apparently a little bit disappointing, and he came away from his pro day feeling terrible. He said, quote, I didn't feel good at all. I had trained hard for two days before my pro day, and my back and legs were tight. After the broad jump, I felt my back lock up, and I didn't feel good when I ran the 40 yard dash. This ended up going all over the internet, as I remember seeing his numbers, and many people thought they had just witnessed a player go from a potential first round pick to undrafted. That is how big of a deal the 40-yard dash time is, and that is exactly what would happen. Weidermeyer would be passed on with every single pick in the draft, and he would end up signing an undrafted free agent deal with the Bills. He'll hopefully have an opportunity to make the roster, and he's a guy who could really be good at the NFL level. So why did he go undrafted? He was a three-time All-SEC selection, has the best numbers in Texas A&M school history for a tight end, and scouts were once drooling over him. Literally, I think it's because of his pro day. Maybe there's something else I'm missing, but it seems like they put all their stock into that one test number, and that's why he went undrafted. Because of that, I hope all these scouts are wrong, and that Weidermeyer tears it up for the Bills and becomes the player we all think he can become. It's really unfortunate to see, and these are the worst stories to cover on the channel. But what do you guys think? If you're a Texas A&M fan, what do you think happened to Weidermeyer and why did he go undrafted? And be sure to let me know another player whose stock fell that I can take a look at in my next video. Before you go, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out all my other videos on the end screen. Hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.